Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam. I am an artist, illustrator and aspiring knitting designer coming to you from Dublin in Ireland. This is my little corner of the internet, as they say, in which I like to share with you my crafty adventures. Um, it's basically a lot of knitting stuff, sometimes some um, artworks and uh, anything that is literally happening in my crafty artistic life. And I try to follow the classic knitting podcast schedule, talking about uh, Finnish works, works in progress, acquisitions, and there's no acquisition this time, spoiler alert, and uh, sometimes I will answer some of your questions or give you updates about my personal and artistic life. You can find me uh, on Instagram, looking for an Irish knitting podcast, or around the internet under my art brand, Irish Farm Art. I decided to record today on a Wednesday because the weekend is gonna be super busy. Being a lawyer is not an easy task, especially if you're planning to take summer holidays and uh, your bosses absolutely don't care about it. So it's uh, going to be a very, very busy uh, week or so, uh, weekend, starting like tomorrow. So I decided to come to you a little earlier. So yeah, let's get started with the Finnish works. And there's uh, a couple this time. Uh, I will address the one that I'm wearing afterwards, but before that I would like to um, give you an update on the knit along that I'm running. So as you may be aware, um, I'm running a bright uh, rainbow knit along. So uh, the idea was born, actually suggested by a couple of uh, subscribers here on this channel, that we should have a knit along to celebrate Pride Month coming. Uh, if you're not aware, Pride Month, the month of awareness around LGBTQA plus rights, will, um, is usually uh, June around the world, but especially here in Europe. And uh, to uh, celebrate Pride and uh, especially to raise awareness on the um, danger that uh, LGBTQA plus rights are facing right now uh, basically everywhere around the world, even here in Ireland. I decided to start this little knit along and the rules are super easy. Knit something using the pride colors, can be uh, a pride flag, the rainbow flag, can be any other uh, LGBTQA plus flags that you can easily find around the internet. I'm gonna put some resources down here. Doesn't need to be a Finnish work, uh, but the scope of this uh, knit along is uh, literally to raise awareness, to knit everything rainbowy, pridey, and uh, it's basically a fight that we're gonna fight using our needles here. And hopefully, uh, after uh, this knit along, there will be a couple of more people that uh, are aware of the danger that LGBTQA plus rights are facing. So, need something on the pride color, you can crochet something or if you want to make an artwork related to that, um, tag me on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, using the hashtag uh, Rainbow Cal 23, which is Rainbow Cal 23 altogether. Uh, you, of course, should be a subscriber to my channel. And if you are not able to get uh, onto a social media, um, please send me a comment down here highlighting the hashtag Rainbow Cal 23 or into my uh, rubbery. I just create a little 
call page that you can add your photos, comments. If all of this system is not um, uh, helpful for you, but you still want to enter the call, uh, please send me an email on uh, irishfarmart at gmail.com with uh, your work and I am going to enter you into the final raffle. Hello everybody, uh, it's um, editing some here. Um, I just forgot to mention that because there are some spammers, uh, hackers, bad people around the internet, the winner of the giveaway will be mentioned on my podcast, on video. So there won't be any email sent out from me or people pretending to be me or any Instagram messages, nothing like that. The winner will be mentioned on my channel and uh, uh, you will contact me if you are the winner. So it's just to avoid, never give out uh, your details, address, um, credit cards information. I just want to make that clear. I'll leave you to the rest of the video. The Nitalong will run from last week, from now, until the end of the month of June. Prices for this Nitalong, I'm still looking to buy a couple of balls of yarns. Uh, that uh, may be related to the LGBTQA plus community, uh, hand dyed yarn or uh, some rainbow yarn. I still have no idea. I haven't looked into that because if I start buying yarn, I am going to buy a lot of yarn. Let's go into that a little later. We have as well a couple of patterns that uh, are donated by lovely viewers so thank you so so much for that more details will come uh, in my future episodes about that so still looking for prices but it's coming along quite nice i am seeing a few projects already uh, people are tagging me around and it's very nice that even if you are not an lgbt person it's still heartwarming for me to feel the support of the community. And I want to thank a lot uh, The Knitting Stew here on uh, YouTube to entering the cult, but as well to mentioning this Knit Along on her podcast. If you haven't uh, watched The Knitting Stew yet, she is quite popular <laughs> and she is quite talented as well. So. I'm going to link her channel below and please give her a follow and uh, tell her that I'm sending you. If you have a podcast yourself and you would like to support the cause, please um, spread the news of the Rainbow Cal 23. It's not for advertising on my channel or anything, but it's just because I deeply care about this topic. Enough blattering about that. Let's get into the finished work. You have seen this uh, last time. This is a pair of socks that I knitted up. They are completely wet. <laughs> I just finished them last night, but I really wanted to show you these socks on the podcast today. So I put them on some blockers and uh, here you go. These are knitted using um, a DK yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's their um, DK sock yarn. It's 100% wool, which is quite interesting being socks. I was expecting a little bit of um, nylon in that. Hopefully they will keep up. Um, as I said, it's DK yarn and uh, the um, colorway is Technicolor. You can see it's a beautiful stripe yarn. Um, the stripes, the rows are very, very short. So you knit up a pair of socks in no time. I always find that when I have a little uh, change of colors, really the speed of knitting is just crazy. And as well, the fact that it's DK yarn takes nothing for socks to I'm not caring very much about the fact that it's not, uh, uh, there's no nylon in it because being DK, it created a quite lofty fabric. So 
So I'm not going to use these socks into shoes or anything, but just to bob around the house, as they say. About the sock. This is a pattern that I came up with. Um, I don't know if you can tell the stitch pattern. This is um, a stitch pattern that I found in an old magazine from my uh, mom's. It is called the Mussolini rib in Italian, or the mock English rib, something like that. Because of the name, uh, I suppose is a very, very old stitch pattern that used to be pop popular at the beginning of uh, last century. It's uh, basically a combination of uh, knits and pearls in a couple of rows. I'm not spoiling it because this is a new pattern that I'm publishing. So I use that pattern all the way through the sock, apart from the sole, which is uh, um, just talking at stitch. I do like this change of uh, rib and uh, stocking it for the sock. I decided to use that rib not just because it's a vintage stitch type of thing, but as well because I like uh, ribbed socks. I like them to be quite tight on my feet and uh, I didn't want to make another regular ribbed sock, so that is a nice combination. After Tot Heel, or we established last time, Paisen's Heel and uh, a nice little barn uh, toe. The custom is uh, my 2x2 two two tubular cast on. I filmed a little tutorial last time. It's uh, tubular but without any of the fuss of having to reconfigure your knit and pearls after you cast on. It's not 100% perfect tubular but if you're not patient enough to get to uh, put together the uh, knit and pearls as per every other uh, tubular 2x2 tutorials. It's a very, very good compromise, so I'm very happy. I knitted this using 2.25 and 2.5 millimeter needles. So I basically kept my needles as I was knitting for a fingering way yarn. Now, this West Yorkshire Spinners yarn is quite thin. It's a thinnish decay. It could be compared to a... what you call it? To a sport weight. A lofty sport weight, of course. Uh, so, it was very pleasant to knit with. The fact that I kept a very small needle size allowed me to get a much tighter fabric, which was what I was looking for to avoid uh, the sock to peel or to get ruined because they are poor, pure wool and as well to be very warm. The pattern, I don't know if it will be out right now, but it, if it will be, it's going to be linked below in the description as well. I decided to call it Moknos. Uh, it's an Irish word. Irish people, apology for the pronunciation, I'm doing my best. Moknos is the Irish word that means uh, playfulness. Just because um, they are very easy socks to uh, knit up and the pattern is quite uh, playful. Uh, you can use whatever decay yarn you want, uh, doesn't need to be self-striping or anything. It's just a very, very simple, very fun knit. So. Yeah, if it's already, um, it's gonna be down here um, in this video. And please check it out. Now, let's talk about the big piece. You've seen this coming together in literally less than a month. This is a Ridari sweater. Uh, the pattern is by Istex, the company that does loppy yarns. It's a beautiful bottom-up um, sweater with a circular yoke, very easy and simple color work. Now, once again, why am I uh, knitting 
another Ridari. This is my second one. My first one has been knitted in Drops Lima and is currently living in Italy. <laughs> and um, I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it until I got back to Italy a um, couple of months ago. It was very cold and that was basically the only jumper I had over there. So I put it on and I, boom, fell in love with the garment. Fits super well. It's uh, crazy cozy and uh, I do like the color work. It's not really in your face. There are not stars or anything. It's just a very, very nice altogether uh, garment. The yarn that I use is a combination of um, uh, Sunless Garn um, Pergint yarn, which is 100% uh, wool um, DK yarn, in the main color, which is uh, Nougat Tutti Frutti. It's a basically a nougat color, a beige color, with the speckles of um, red, green, orange, yellow, blue. It's absolutely beautiful. For the contrasting color, I use uh, Sunness Garn Perfect, which is basically a sock yarn, DK. It's a combination of um, nylon and wool, 75-25, if I'm correct. In the color ink, I think this is called mustard, and white. You can find all the information in my Ravelry page. I'm going to link it below as well. Modifications for this garment here. As I did for my last Ridari sweater, um, cuffs, waistband, neck, the original pattern called for a raveled, turned, twisted <laughs> type of neck without ribbing. I don't like that. It's not my style. So I decided to make uh, the cuffs um, as 2x2 two two ribbing using once again that famous cast on technique. Uh, the color is a ribbing color folded in and sewn into the inside and the same for the uh, waistband. Easy peasy, done. I did as well add short rows on the back at the bottom of the yoke and uh, a tiny bit at the bottom of the waistband as well. This allows me to get a little bit longer back, so both the collar piece and the waistband are fitting a little better. As well as I start with a smaller circumference of my waist, going up with uh, increasing under the underarm piece, until I reach the recommended uh, size for the uh, color piece. Because the pattern is made for a worsted weight yarn, I had to do some calculations to be able to use a DK yarn. I needed for this jumper the size 3. For my previous attempt, I needed size 1, just because I was using a bigger needle. Size 3 on mm, stitch counts, but size 1 for everything else. Although I don't really follow sizes for measurements like the length of the sleeves or the bust, because I'm going more on my own measurements. So I take a previous garment that I need, a previous jumper, and I take measurements out of that. It's becoming now more and more natural as I am almost 100% knitting bottom-up sweaters and, uh, you know, you understand more or less where you're at. Modifications that I... modification... things that I would uh, do differently. Color is a little too short. I probably would have uh, knitted a few more rows to get the color a little bit higher. And I might actually do that after this video, just because I find that I'm always pulling my color up to cover 
the neck or not show a t-shirt. It's not bad. It's not bad. But, you know, if I could have something perfect, why not? And this garment, this jumper, is absolutely stunning, apart from that little piece. I'll give you a tiny bit of a uh, run around, and uh, you can see how beautifully this is wearing. I'm astonished. So, once again, the Ridari sweater by Istex. I am not done with this. I think I will make more. <laughs> I do have five balls of this melange, is it called? This speckled yarn. And to make another garment, I need probably other six or seven balls. So I'm waiting for the paycheck to come and finally place a yarn order. You can't find this in Ireland. You have to buy from abroad. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's it for this piece. Let's go on with uh, works in progress. So, this is a new custom that I literally cast on this week out of spite. <laughs> out of spite because, uh, as I mentioned in my last podcast, I am playing yarn chicken way too often which is something that I am quite annoyed with. So, because I had in my stash a lot of this yarn that I'm gonna talk about in a second, I decided to cast on a jumper. And uh, I cast it on using my 260 method. So it's basically bottom up. I know that 260 is my circumference if I use 2.5 millimeters needle. I don't know what this is going to become. It is probably going to become a Marius sweater. Marius is a pattern that I absolutely love. It's very traditional Norwegian garment. The pattern is by Sandness. Uh, it's beautiful color work. In this case, it's probably going to be sticked. So you have a stick uh, sleeves. I don't know what is going to become. Uh, the yarn is... Uh, this one. This is uh, uh, Darni by Studio Donegal. It's an Irish yarn. I bought a few uh, of these skeins in uh, this color, which is um, 8802, and a contrasting color 8809, which is a lovely ink blue with a tiny little green and gray and other colors <laughs> speckle and together they do look very nice. This was born as a Marius sweater many many months ago but uh, yeah the yarn stayed there for a long time so now I'm sure this is a jumper quantity and I started this. For uh, this piece, I don't even know how to call it, it's not a jumper yet and doesn't even know what uh, to become. I use a regular one-to-one -one tubular um, cast on 260 stitches, my circumference and I'm just a way, uh, knitting up the body. If you have any pattern recommendations, any nice color work, yoki, a jumper that uh, uses fingering weight yarn, please let me know because this is looking for um, to become something. I am not actively working on this as um, next week I'll be having a nightmare of a week, so many uh, meetings. And during meetings, when you don't need to have your camera on and when you're there just because they need a lawyer to be there, you can knit a lot. So I am planning next week to take a big chunk out of this garment. Once again, let's talk about the yarn. This is Studio Donegal. Uh, it's an Irish brand, a spin spawn spawn in Ireland. Um, I was looking at their uh, website to find out if the wool is Irish. 
I don't think is Irish, uh, but I don't have a confirmation of that. I was talking to a sheep farmer, and uh, this person is as well an alpaca farmer here in Ireland. We don't have many of those, so if you are Irish, you probably know who I'm talking about. And they were mentioning that we don't have facilities in this country to card our fleeces and spin them up, or we don't have facility to carve and clean our fleeces. So this was probably a couple of years ago when the Brexit situation wasn't that bad. So they used to send every fleece to Britain and then back to them for spinning up. So I don't know now if Studio Donegal has a uh, possibility of uh, managing the fleece from sheep to yarn. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to support a little bit of an Irish company. This is fingering way yarn. And I'm reading to you the specs here. It's approximately 410 meters by 100 gram skein. And uh, it's called 2 ply, 2 slash 0 0.2 nanometer nm. And the suggest gauge is 28 stitches by 10 centimeters. Next work in progress, I'm looking around because they are everywhere. I need to check the name of the pattern. My next work in progress is a cardigan. And it's knitted in pieces. I have the back done that I can't show for some sort of reason. And uh, I have started one of the fronts. Now, this is the um, cardigan number 20 by Lang Yarn. If you are a male knitter or if you want to knit something for your husband, your boyfriend, uh, a friend, a male friend, check out Lang Yarn website, their patterns, because they are mind-blowing. So many beautiful male patterns. I haven't checked the female ones, but the male ones are beautiful, modern, something that you can actually find in a shop. So, so pretty. This pattern here is a cardigan knitted in pieces with the pockets, and I haven't knitted a pocket. And um, as a zipper, this is something that I really want to try. I never knitted anything with a zipper, so yeah. Pocket wise, it was quite of a challenge because I don't know if you can see here, but the pocket is actually. Uh, invisible. So the way that the pattern tells you to deal with is to cast off a number of stitches to knit the facing, the pocket itself, turn it up and then uh, start knitting again those um, stitches that you casted off before with a nice uh, little sewing in for the pocket. Now, I don't know if I'm doing that right. The pattern is not clear <laughs> on that piece. I watched a couple of tutorials, but I really do like the way it looks. And uh, yeah, it's very, very nice. Now, this project is uh, uh, frozen once again. We're not working on this because I am knitting this using Drops Lima icy gray or pearl gray if i'm right and i don't have any balls left in my stash this was more of a nimbus cast on and i'm pleased that with the four balls i was able to make the whole bag and half of uh, one uh, sides i need to buy yarn i know and i need to buy it quite soon because i'm not having any yarn left, but I, that will come with the next paycheck, as we just said. 
For my needle size, I'm using um, four millimeter needles and 3.5 for the ribbing. These are my Chaogu interchangeable uh, needles. Nothing else to say about that. It's a brilliant pattern. Uh, it's a little obscure in a couple of um, passages, but what can you do? You can just uh, make up stuff and uh, go as you go. Something that the pattern doesn't describe is how to stitch up the zipper. If you know of any tutorials that tells you how to do that in a very nice and neat way, please let me know because I'm quite interested in that. Now, we are flying through here and we have our last work in progress, which is humongous. This is an update on my blanket. It's, it's actually very big. I don't know if I made the rice the right choice to knit it this big, but it's basically a blanket that I'm knitting up using all my waste yarn, all the bits and bobs of yarns that I have around the house, uh, holding them double when they are fingering weight or the holding them single when they are decays. And um, yeah, it's looking quite pretty. I do especially like these pops of orange color and uh, line of white. Uh, what else to say? It's a crochet work. I am not a crocheter myself. Although I grew up seeing my mom crocheting all the time. Crocheting is her first uh, business when it comes to fiber arts. And um, I kind of pick up here and there some techniques. This is uh, worked using a 3.5 millimeters, 3.5 size uh, hook. And the stitch is called entrelac stitch, which is this sort of uh, waved fabric type of thing. It's really, really pretty, really thick like it's almost half a centimeter thick it's nice and heavy the downside is for one row of this it takes me forever like uh, one day no joking to make one row if i don't work on anything else it's all right it's just a lot of work a lot but yeah i'm keeping this out so that every now and then I can just take it in, uh, work a few squares and uh, do something with that. Now I've needed about 20 centimeters. I know it's not a lot. I know for sure that this won't be ready anytime soon. But yeah, it's always nice to hope, isn't it? <laughs> so. That was it for the knitting side of the house. I do not have any acquisitions, although I'm trying to um, buy some yarn for the knit along giveaway and uh, as well for those couple of projects that I need yarn for. And that will hopefully come in a couple of weeks. Um, if you are interested in the knitting and uh, thank you so much for coming by that was absolutely lovely to have you here and uh, i really hope you enjoy this little video if you would like to spread the news of the rainbow cal 23 or enter please 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 Tag me on Instagram here, Ravelry, anywhere else. Use the hashtag RainbowCal23 and uh, it ends at the end of June. Once again, we want to raise awareness around the danger that LGBTQA plus rights as fundamental human rights are facing around the world right now. Now, 
I was thinking how can I kind of film for an hour or so. I do like to keep my blogs, my meeting podcast of about an hour. So as per usual, I ask on the internet if you have any questions related to knitting or not. And I have a few. So I am having my questions written down in my lovely moleskin here. And the first question came from uh, uh, Instagram and was all about male patterns. So I feel like the question is how do you need for a male body or what type of patterns do you use? Now, I do recognize that it's difficult to find male patterns um, written for a male body. Now, there are a few designers that do that amazingly. Um, Alicia Plummer is one of those. I needed a few patterns from her, Petit Knits as well. Uh, Steven West has a few too and so many more. I just mentioned Lang Yarn or my beloved Sunness Garn. They have a lot of patterns that are written for men. Uh, coming to mind here is Istex, <laughs> the Ridari and many other uh, sweaters, as well as Rauma has a few patterns. Arne and Carlos have a few patterns too. So you can find patterns. But if you really are in love with a garment and you want to change it to a male body, a couple of things to be aware of, or a couple of things that I do is shoulder. For a male body, shoulders are usually wider. So take that into account with your stitching. Waist is always a little bit smaller. So something that I do, that I've done with this jumper, is to knit a lower stitch count on the waist and then increase at the underarm piece at the sides a couple of stitches uh, up to seven or eight stitches depending on what um, yarn you're using on tension and so on in order to get a little bit of the triangular funnel waist type of thing the thing to be aware of is uh, the ribbing at the bottom and then the stitch count at the top. So start from a pattern that has uh, your desired stitch count on the yoke before you change for the sleeves or if you're going the other way around it's easier. Start the pattern as it's written and then increase up towards your desire count or decrease down towards your desire count. Ribbing, why you have to be aware? Because if you're doing two by two ribbing, you need to be aware of the ribbing to be consistent and joining um, in order to get knit and pearl to match. If you're doing one by one, just uh, be careful of uh, getting the pearl stitch at the end and the knit at the beginning or the other way around, so they match. That's basically it. The last thing that I do almost always is to add the short rows everywhere at the bottom and at the neck or in this case at the yoke. To do so I um, generally add the short rows before I separate for the sleeves so that the short rows are not interlocked within the yoke and they are quite nice. They are split between the yoke piece and the back, so it gives a little bit of length on both sides, which is great. Um, you can use the flax sweater pattern as a template for short rows, that's great. You will find that um, as you grow in your knitting, you can use short rows generally. Last thing to remember is measurements. Take a jumper, measure it, and follow those measurements. Otherwise, you can't really <laughs> get the right jumper. 
and that is true i believe for a female body and a male body you know we are different those are the modifications that i usually do when i'm knitting a female pattern for myself i think that more or less answers your questions the other question that came up quite often it's related to needles i don't know I wasn't expecting many questions on needles, but I always am receiving a few questions on needles. I did a Q&A before and someone asked me about needles and now people ask me about needles as well. Needles for me are a tool, but it's a very important one. I, for the longest amount of time, because I'm cheap by heart, <laughs> never bought expensive needles. I always got by with uh, those gray circular needles that you can buy on Amazon for a couple of euros. You get a full set. Now, the first time that I bought a proper set was a set of uh, Haya Haya steel interchangeable needles. And that completely changed my life. I do like metal needles. Or exclusively, I don't own any bamboo or wooden needle and uh, I would recommend to buy a decent set of needles. This because speeds up your work. For me, it's important to have a seamless working experience. I don't need wooden needles to stick to the yarns. I need needles that are sleek, the yarn flies through and I need cables that are not raveling on yourself uh, or doing crazy things. So my recommendation, I don't know if it's a recommendation, but my pref preference here is to get good quality or decent quality needles, um, steel and uh, with decent cables. Higher higher is a possibility. But if you don't have the means for higher higher, which are quite expensive now, I am going to recommend drops. Yes. <laughs> I very recently uh, found that um, I'm not the only one that use those grey cheap needles, uh, but my mother and my sisters as well are using those. My mom never knitted with circular needles, she always used those long straight needles. So she got curious about knitting with uh, circulars and she bought herself, like I did, <laughs> grey needles. And she couldn't figure out a way to work with those. So last time, after uh, looking at the two of them, trying to figure out how to use uh, circular needles, those gets on your way all the time. I bought them a very cheap set of interchangeable needles from Drops. Don't remember the name uh, of the set or anything, but very cheap, very um, decent quality. And their life changed, their knitting life changed. They were so happy, the work came through, they understood how to use them. Drops are a very good compromise if you don't have the means to buy Haya Haya or Chaogu or those. Drops nozzles on the interchangeable are the same as a Lique needle, if you are fond of wood and uh, Knit Pro Knitter Sprite needle. So you can build a set uh, matching all of those. That is my recommendation. I would like to address another little question or comment that I got on uh, Instagram. Someone sent me a message, <laughs> quite annoyed actually which was very surprising, about myself putting both on Instagram and uh, YouTube here shorts and uh, small videos around my artistic journey. And this person was mentioning that they are here for the knitting and they will unsubscribe or unfollow because the content doesn't uh, 
interest them, which is fair enough. If you're here for the knitting, you're here for the knitting. Uh, this is my outlet for my craft, my artistic world. And um, sometimes it's, it happens that I paint and I like to share that part of me. Now, I tend to keep it quite separate on Instagram. I was able to build quite uh, a following situation on my artistic channel on Instagram. So I keep those two words separate. But YouTube, for some sort of reason, I probably couldn't be bothered to create another channel uh, or everything like that. I'm just uploading every now and then a snapshot of art. Uh, watercolor generally or lately uh, and stuff like that. That shouldn't bother you because I make the decision of taking off the notifications to people that are subscribed to the channel. So if you're subscribed for the knitting, which is the vast majority of uh, us, of you guys, you shouldn't receive any notification about myself uploading an artistic video. I know that will take off uh, views or possibility of uh, getting more subscribers, uh, art-related subscribers, but uh, after that comment I felt like uh, I'm messing up the thing, so I'd rather not to bother people with that, but I still want to share. And if someone is interested in my art, with a very, very small research you can find those videos, so that is it. What am I painting currently? Because you don't want to know about art. Um, I am uh, painting watercolors. I am finding myself quite in a loop of um, developing an illustrative style. For the longest amount of time I have been painting kind of fine art things, uh, oil paintings of um, landscapes, animal portraits, people's portraits. And I have been missing the possibility of uh, carrying around my art uh, when I'm traveling, when I'm in an airport, uh, like you would do for your knitting. So last summer, was it? I was in Spain with my sketchbook and some watercolor, and I tried to do some urban sketching, so sketching the buildings where I was and so on. It took me so long, like literally, the entire afternoon to get a sketch done. Which is not the essence of urban sketching or bringing around your sketchbook where you're at. You're supposed to take it out, draw a little bit, a wash of uh, watercolor and you're done and happy. So I'm trying currently to develop this sort of illustrative style to be able to carry around my sketchbook and paint and do some decent quality watercolor when I am out and about. And that is becoming a big chunk of my artistic life lately. So that I'm kind of denigrating a bit uh, my oil paintings, which is all right, but you know. Anyway, that was it. Sorry a bit for the rumbling, once again. Uh, check out my uh, knit along if you want to enter. Please, please, please spread the news. If you have a YouTube channel, it would be lovely. You don't need to mention me, but mention the knit along. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.